Hello YouTube, I'm PCJ Law and here's my Civ 5 6 min max tips you can use to optimize your gameplay on Deity. But most of these will enhance your game on any difficulty, they're just most impactful at the highest level. However, before we kick off, I must say that these tips are most useful for those who already know about the science beeline and how important food focus is through the medieval industrial eras. If these words seem alien to you, or you think you're not quite there yet, or you're looking for a video at a slightly lower level, do check out my video Civ 5 10 Tips to Beat Deity, Deity Difficulty with any Civ. So let's begin first with my secret 7th tip which I'm really making a habit of, which is tip 0, Enhanced User Interface Mod. It reduces the number of clicks you need to access information, as well as automatically doing a whole bunch of arithmetic that would be necessary to do some of these min-max tips, saving you plenty of time and brain power. It's linked in the comment section below. There's one example that I'm going to demonstrate on screen here. You can see a couple of things, but one of the most important that we'll see later, or one of the useful ones that we'll see later anyway, is here if I hover over my food growth bar, I can see that it tells me that I've got 8 food out of the 10 that I require to grow to the next population point. And then it also tells me to grow in one turn how many additional food I need to do that on top of what I've already got. In this case, because I'm growing in one turn, it's telling me that I need plus zero because I'm going to land on exactly 10 as I have eight food out of 10. And if I zoom in and look at the citizens I'm working, I'm working a two food tile, which means that I'll get my plus two food and grow in the next turn. Also, if we hover over the production bar, it tells you just how many production you've got towards the next thing that you're building and how many extra production you're going to need to gain to bring it down a turn or even to go up a turn, which is quite useful. Anyway, on to the real tips, which will be one, the production focus trick, two, you can't starve when building settlers, three, selling strategic resources one at a time for two gold per turn, four, growing in two turns instead of one, five, production overflows to cut a turn off a wonder, and six, culture and faith, city state friendships. Tip one, the production focus trick. This exploits the way you gain your yields. You gain your yields at the start of the turn and not at the end. That's something that you should know as an aspiring min max exiv player. First, and the yields are given sequentially. So first, the food gained from your land. Second, if your excess food is now over the threshold for generating a new citizen, then a new citizen is generated and assigned a tile to work based on your city's focus. Third, you receive all other yields. Since your new citizen has been generated earlier in the turn, it actually contributes to the rest of the yields calculated. Food was the only thing calculated before your new citizen was born, so your new citizen can contribute to all yields except food. This means that any food your new citizen lands on is worthless for this turn. So how do we avoid landing on wasted food? We set our city to production focus, so that our citizen lands on the tile with the most production on it. We choose production because it's the most important thing early game besides food. However, you might then ask, but if I set my city to production focus, it won't grow? You're right. We have to manually lock in all the tiles we actually want to work so that the citizen, the only citizen controlled by the city focus is the new one that's born. So we manually lock food focus, even though we tick production. And I'll show you this on screen now. So we have our city of Copenhagen and with the beauty of the enhanced user interface mod we can see that we've got 8 out of 10 food required for the next citizen and that we're gaining plus 2 excess food per turn which means that at the start of the next turn we'll gain 2 food, get to 10 and generate a new citizen. Now I'm locked on production focus right now so let me show you how you can make it really easy to lock food focus if you don't know already. First you switch your city tile focus to food focus then click your city tile that unlocks all of the tiles that you've currently got and assigns them based on the focus that you've got. Then you can double click all of the things that it just worked so that you've got your manually locked in city focus. Then if I tick production focus, you'll notice the tiles don't change. So we've got food focus even though we've said production. That's crucial to this trick. Now we can see that our scout currently has four production towards it. We've got four out of 16. Now, if we got things as they were and without the production focus trick, we'd gain five production towards it at the next turn, resulting in nine. But let's see what happens now that we've done this. So we can see that we grew to our next population point, the point of two, and that because we were on production focus, the citizen went away and worked the sheep for one food and two production. And let's check on our scout. 11 production. So instead of gaining plus 5, we gain plus 7. Why? Because we gain the 2 extra from working the sheep tile at the start of the turn because of the order in which you get your yields. First, excess food, or you know, 
just food in general, I guess, because you can get negative food to starve. Second, new citizen is born. And then third, you gain the rest of the yields, allowing that previous new citizen to contribute. And I can show you that the, the food it landed on is totally invaluable because let's check on our food counter. Now, food is carried over. So right now we knew that we had eight and we gained plus two to get to 10. So that means that when those 10 food was, were used up to create our new citizen, we would end back up on zero. Now, we see that we've got zero and we actually had an extra one food being worked that we hadn't previously. That means that if we had gained some extra food at the start of the turn by whatever nonsense, then we would have actually had one extra food, this kind of like plus one food, if you will, such that we would have had one out of 16, but we have zero out of 16, which means that no, we didn't gain any extra food. The food doesn't impact whatever we gained at the start of the turn at all. And instead, we only gained the two production from this tile, resulting in us gaining plus seven for 11, as opposed to plus five for nine. So that is the production focus trick. Tip two, you can't starve when building settlers. You don't need to work food when producing a settler, although you know, do remember to work food again the moment you're done. Um, at pop three, you can have something like 10 to 11 production towards building settlers by working three hills for six production, the three from your palace to take you up to nine, and then one to two, depending on if you settled on a hill, taking you to 10 to 11. And this is fine because you can't starve. However, with any of the city manager settings, it will always force you to have at least zero excess food, you know, stopping you from starving, meaning that without manually locking in tiles, you would not be able to achieve your 10 to 11 production because working all those tiles would result in negative excess food, which the city governor will not allow you to do. This is a big deal because any excess food could be wasted, costing you 10 to 20% of your production. So we manually lock in our highest production tiles when building settlers, ignoring food. So let's show you this now. So let's just take the settler out of my production queue. I'm on production focus right now and all my cities are unlocked. So the city tile manager or the governor, whatever you like to call it, is manually controlling everything. We have plus eight production. Now I'll put my settler in the queue. That actually goes up to plus nine production. That's because excess food can actually count towards building a new settler. At plus one excess food, you get plus one hammer. At plus two excess food, you get plus two hammers. And at plus four excess food, you get plus three hammers. So we have plus one excess food right now, which means that when I dump my settler into the queue, I get nine production as opposed to the eight that it was showing me previously. Now you can see that we've got nine, um, but what if I manually lock in my tiles? I'll lock in this horse because it's got two hammers. I'll lock the sheep because it's got two hammers. And actually I'll take this population out and leave it unemployed because an unemployed citizen is actually also worth one production. That's the best that I can do out of my land. And I've got 11 production now. So we've gone up from nine to 11. That's adding more than 10%. In fact, it's adding something you know in that 10 to 20% range that I referenced earlier. So we see that manually locking, locking in these tiles does give us ex extra production, but let's just check we can't start. Up here we see that food or excess food is plus zero. Plus zero means no growth and no, no starvation. If I make sure to work excess food, and I'll show you this here. We've got plus one, um, but let's do our settler. And we'll see that actually now we've gone to zero excess food. When you build a settler, you are guaranteed, no matter what tile assignments you have, to have zero excess food. That means you can't grow, and it means, importantly, you can't starve. That means I can assign these tiles like this to get my 11 production. And, well, as you can see, I won't starve. And let me roll the turnover for you just to show that my city is not starving at all. I've currently got 5 out of 22 food, so we'd expect it to stay there if I haven't starved. And so let's mouse over, and there you have it. 5 out of 22 food, I haven't starved. So that is the tip 2, you can't starve when building settlers. Tip 3, selling strategic resources one at a time for 2 gold per turn. This exploit is the fact that the AI will accept a rounded up gold per turn value when they actually value the resource somewhere in between. Let's demonstrate this now on screen. So one of the helpful things about the enhanced user interface mod is that it tells you in the top right hand corner when the AI values something. You can see here the picture of a horse is telling me that they actually value horses, i.e. they'd actually pay for it. So let's take Austria and trade with them. Now, 
When we sell strategic resources to the AI, they actually value them at 37 gold on quick speed. I'm not friends with AI now, so I can't actually demonstrate you, but take my word for it, they value it at 37 gold on quick speed. However, one gold per turn is worth 25 gold, since the deal lasts 25 turns. So 37 gold is almost or practically one and a half gold per turn. The trick is that the AI will accept two gold per turn for one strategic resource, since they will accept this one and a half gold per turn there's two gold per turn, since you can't make a deal for fractions of a GPT. So let's show this now. I sell one horse for two gold per turn. Enhanced user interface mod allows me to get, get it like this because it's for min maxes, and I'll propose it. And Maria accepts. But if you sell two strategic resource, they won't actually accept more than three gold per turn because they value each at 1.5 gold per turn. So two times 1.5 is three. There's no rounding to be done. So they'll only take three and not the four that you would expect. So let's do this now. So two horses, and actually I can't do this with Maria because she's run out of gold. So, and we can't do it with Solomon actually either. So let me just, I'm not entirely sure the best way to show it now. I guess we need to give the AI some gold per turn. So let's just give Maria some gold per turn. So now she's got four. So let's sell our two horses for four gold per turn. That doesn't work. So we only sell it for, we could sell it for three. Um, so let's do it like this. So let's change the gold per turn to three and then click propose. And now she accepts. So as you can see, if you don't sell them one at a time, there you only ever, you sell them at one and a half gold per turn, but selling them one at a time can benefit from the rounding up to two gold per turn. So you should sell all your strategic resources one at a time for two gold per turn and make as many deals as necessary. This is applicable to any difficulty, but it's most useful on Deity since the higher the difficulty, the more resource an AI will actually use to build military, which means that they're going to demand a resource more because they've used up more of it. And you don't need to worry about losing out by not selling that or you know by selling the AI more than they need. Um, and that's because the AI will only ever pay for as much as they want, regardless of whether or not you give them more. So if in my previous deal with Maria, and in fact we can see it here, she doesn't want horses anymore. If I tried to offer her three horses, she would have only paid for two horses. I would have only got three gold per turn for my three horses, as opposed to three gold per turn for two horses, because she was only willing to pay for the horses that she actually wanted. So, you know, just one other final thought I guess is that, you know, what about military? Well, you know, you don't need chariots, horsemen or swordsmen against AI pikes and the relevant range unit do just fine, which means that you don't actually need any of the strategic resources like horses or iron. The gold per turn turns out to be much more valuable than access to a marginally better swordsman that's off the science beeline. Tip 4. Growing in two turns instead of one. One turn may not sound like anything until you realise it's half a percent of a whole deity game on quick speed. If you grow in one turn instead of two turns, and you do that six times, that's 3% more of the game that you'll have your final citizen count. However, we also benefit from everybody's brain hurting term, compounding interest. Gaining your next citizen faster gets the next one even faster and so on. So we'll actually have a final citizen count for more than that 3% more in the example. So how do we do it? Every turn, I like to zoom out and observe the whole empire. This serves two purposes. First, to check my borders for AI armies. So I can bribe a war instead of getting killed. Second, to check to see if any of my cities have one or two turns left to grow. Enhanced user interface is incredibly useful for this trick by the way, makes it quick and easy to do, whereas without it it's a bit time consuming. So with my capital I have two turns left to grow. If I have two turns left to grow, I can mouse over the growth bar with enhanced user interface and it shows me how much more food I need. In this case I need, I've got one turn minus 0.8. I then can go into my city screen to lock in that extra food if I can by unworking a production tile or two for food. So in this case I need 0.8 food in order to grow to the next population point in one turn as opposed to two. So I go into Copenhagen and I see that I've got this three food tile that I've not worked in. So I'll take my horse tile, the one with one food and three production, and gain two food by going from one food to three food. And now we grow in one turn as opposed to two. This brings us down to the one turn growth then, however you may ask, if we unwork production, then surely we lose production? Well, that's where tip one comes in, the production focus trick. Our new citizen lands on the production tile that we've just unworked, and that gets us that yield anyway. So overall, we've kept the production the same, but we've gained our population one turn earlier. So, if that hurt your brain, 
Don't worry about the workings, just know that unworking production for food to grow in one turn as opposed to two turns is no net loss to production so long as you use the production focus trick. And I'll demonstrate it now. On the old way round, we were going to be getting plus 11 production to get, you know, to go from 57.08 to 67 point, well, to 68.08 for our cargo ship. If I do this, it's currently predicting that we don't even complete the cargo ship the next turn. So if we actually gain our production from the production focus trick, then we'll see that our cargo ship builds next turn anyway. So we hit next turn. And our cargo ship finishes, showing we did actually gain extra production and we can see the benefit of the production focus trick right here. That means that on this turn, we've now got six population, whereas in the before example, we still would have been on five population. So there is tip four. Grow in, two to, grow in one turn instead of two. Now, I guess one extension to this then is, I also mentioned that I check for cities with one turn to grow too. And why is that? Surely, you know, they just take the production focus trick. And let's act, and in fact, I won't, I won't do an example, but let's just discuss. And it's because food actually overflows as well. If you have 22 excess food, but you only need 20 to generate a new citizen, then, the, you pay the 20 food to generate the next citizen and the remaining two food is left over to count towards your next citizen. So, for some cities where you may not be able to get two down to one because the math just doesn't work out, now that doesn't mean that we still can't do something cool, which again, using the production focus trick comes into play. If we have one turn to grow, we can unwork a production tile and place it on food. That means we'll get the extra food at the start of the turn, which is carried over for the next citizen anyway. Then our new citizen is generated and lands on the production tile that we just unworked. The end result then is extra food for no loss of production. So you may ask then, you know, we didn't gain any extra production from the production focus trick. You're right, we didn't. In this case, we used the production focus trick to gain extra food. So it's actually completely up to you. Always grow in one as opposed to growing in two. Um, but if you can't get two down to one, then you can actually decide. Do I use the production focus trick to get me extra production by leaving my tiles as they are and then growing with production focus on? Or do I actually get extra food by unworking a production tile that I'm currently on to a tile that has more food? So it's up to you actually there. The production focus trick is the production focus trick, but it actually enables you to gain you know, whichever extra yield that you want at the start of the turn. It can be food, it can be production, it's up to you. I would bias towards production, especially before you've built things like granaries, libraries and water mills, and then perhaps you can choose to bias towards food afterwards if you want. Unless your cities and hammers are bad, in which case you always want the hammers from the production focus trick. Anyway, that's it for growing two turns instead of one. Tip 5. Production overflows. This exploits the fact that production is not wasted when you finish a building. To give an example, if a building costs 30 production and you're generating 40 production per turn, the 10 production you didn't need is carried over to be used on your next building. Why is this a trick? It exists because we can use this overflow strategically to bring down the number of turns it takes to finish a super important building. Say we're producing 40 production per turn and we've got a world wonder that costs 250 production. Normally, that would take seven turns since six times 40 is 240 and then we need the seventh turn to get the remaining 10. However, if we, on the turn before starting the wonder, make a building that costs 30 production, then we'll have 10 carried over to use in our wonder. That makes up the remaining 10 from earlier, meaning we complete it in six turns as opposed to seven, because we can generate this overflow the turn before we research the tech for our wonder. So how do we put this in practice? Well, the turn before you research the tech for a wonder, you, you know, or maybe research labs because they're really important, you can build some random building from early in the game that you never built that's one turn, or sell a building you already have that could be rebuilt in one turn. Commonly your choice is things like a scout or a shrine because it's super cheap you get the maximum leftovers. This way you can put production towards buildings that you don't actually have available yet and it can get you to your wonder one turn faster. Done excessively you can shave more turns off but this of course does require you to have enough production that you can indeed build some super cheap buildings or units in a single turn. If you play multiplayer this is often banned on your server only because it can be a pretty cheesy way 
for someone to steal a wonder. So see if there's a rule against this first. And I'll demonstrate it right now, or not rolling into a wonder, but just with what's happening in Kalpang here. So we can see that we've got 45.48 production, and we're getting a six production per turn. Now, if we were to lose all of our excess production when we finish the building, that means we'd start our next building with zero production. But let me just queue up this shrine behind it for a second, and we'll see. So remember, if we were going to lose that production, then we would be starting the building of our shrine at naught. Um, let's just finish this turn. I've got to sleep a couple of things. And roll over. So we finish the library in Kalpang and begin work on a shrine. And if we look at the production towards our shrine, we can see that we have 1.48 production. That's the leftovers. We needed to gain whatever the difference was in order to build the library. And instead of wasting the excess production, the extra production actually goes on to the shrine. Now, it's something that you don't normally notice, especially if you don't use enhanced use interface or building queues. Um, but it's incredibly valuable and we could have used this easily to shave a turn off a wonder. In fact, it does occur for the oracle here. But at some point, try it and see, and you'll be able to see that sometimes you shave a turn off. You know, think about when you look at a building in the building queue, and sometimes you get buildings that say like one turn, and then you queue them up after another building, and suddenly it says two turns, and you're like, you know, what the hell is going on? Well, that's this trick in action. It's the Civ building queue saying that if you were to build this building as your next building, you would gain your overflow, but because you're not building it as your next building, suddenly you don't have the same level of overflow, and you can't build it in one turn anymore. So that is production overflows, and that's how we use them to shave turns off wonders. Finally, we go on to tip six, which is actually cultural and faith city-state friendships. This isn't a true min-max, but I think it's just as important to include here. Too many players get obsessed with being allies to a city-state, and for good reason. Alliance bonuses are more than twice as good as friendship, because you get resource gifts and votes on top of the bonus of their type. However, Culture and faith in particular are really damn difficult to hard generate using your cities alone, unless you have a pantheon or religion to bolster it. Shrines and temples in a full city empire is only plus 12 faith per turn. Monuments and amphitheaters in a full city empire is plus 12 culture per turn but goes up to plus 17 when you include the palace and tradition. So, faith city states that give you between 3 and 12 faith, per, faith, faith city states that are your friends give you between 3 and 12 faith per turn scaling with era. That means that one friend can be worth between 25% and 100% of what you hard generate with your buildings. You know, because if you've got three faith from coming from your city state friendship and you have 12 per turn, you're gaining an extra 25% by going up from 12 to 15. And if you have your 12 faith per turn and you get a friends with a city state in, you know, say the information or atomic era, you'll be gaining 12 faith per turn, which takes your, you know, 12 faith per turn on top of 12 faith per turn is plus 100%. So that's friendship can really be worth between 25% and 100% of what you can hard generate with buildings. You don't need to tell me how much faster you can buy faith buildings or how many more engineers or scientists it can help you get. Then, if we look at cultural city states, culture city states that are your friends give you between 3 and 13 culture per turn scaly with era. That means one friend can be worth between 23% and 75% of culture, and perhaps even more because, let's be real, you're not, you might not build a single amphitheatre or guild until, until turn 100 or 120. And even then, if you're in the modern era and generating 100 culture per turn, which is already a silly big amount, by the way, 13 culture per turn is still 13% more. That shaves more than a turn off your next social policy. And two friends? Well, that's the same as one ally. Gold gifts, spies and quests can easily get and keep you friendship, avoiding the bidding war that's sometimes required for allies. You know, and if a city state has a gold quest, you can send it at 250 gold. Even if you won't get allies, you'll get around 15 turns of friendship, which will be enough to shave several turns off your next social policy. So, ignore that ego. It's often much cheaper to buy two friends instead of one ally, and you can save annoying anyone. Friendships, especially with culture and faith city states, are well worth it. So don't be blinded by allies. So that brings me to the end of my six min max tips for Civilization 5. Do let me know which of these tips you thought were useful or new to you, or which you disagree with. By starting using all of these, I found myself going from winning deity science victories with poor civs, you know, between turn 195 and 210 on quick speed, depending on land, to consistently winning between turn 180 and 190, you know, with 
you know, a turn 167 victory is America that's uploaded to my channel, or a turn 170 victory is France, during which I never gold or faith purchased a single science building. So, you know, it can really add value, and some of that difference, you know, it'll be down to me getting a little bit better too. But, you know, I managed to shave, you know, 5, 10, 15 turns off my victory times by starting to use all these min max tips, as opposed to only the one or two that I was ever using previously. Do like, subscribe if you liked this video or found it useful. It lets me know what content to keep making for you all, and it lets you know when I upload new videos. There's also a link to my Twitch channel where I stream Civ Deity and Multiplayer twice a week, and the link to the Enhanced User Interface mod which will help you put these tips into action. Please leave comments, questions or suggestions in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.